Hey guys, Oliver here. Today I'm going to be breaking down the most essential tools and materials for Lego photography or toy photography in general. And without further ado, let's get right into it. First up, quite obviously, we have our camera. I personally use this Canon Rebel T3i, which I absolutely love. The thing that I really like about this particular camera is the ability to flip out and twist the angle of this display screen right here. It allows me to see what I'm shooting without having to bend down as my camera is typically just laying flat on the ground. Um, an alternative to an expensive camera like the one I have is just your standard smartphone as phones nowadays have fairly high quality cameras already built into them. So now of course you won't get the same quality with a phone camera or the same focus and depth that you would with an actual camera but as long as your shots are well lit and your camera is set up close to your subject you should be fine for the most part. Once you have your camera, the second most important thing is your subject, specifically how you pose and position it. Oftentimes, for a lot of outdoor shots, it's hard to get your figure to stand up straight, especially if there's any wind. So one of the easiest ways to get around this is to simply use one of these minifigure stands. However, obviously, if you use one of these, you would need to cover it up or simply crop it out of your image. And then it's no secret that Lego minifigs are really restricted in the movements they can do. Uh, so one of the ways that I get around that is with sticky tack. I've already used this in a couple of videos before, but it's a really useful uh, tool for angling helmets or arms in different unconventional angles that you wouldn't otherwise be able to achieve. It's fairly cheap and doesn't damage your figures at all. Um, and it's reusable, so you only really have to buy it once. Alrighty, now it's time to create and fill out your scene as you're almost always going to need to add certain elements to the foreground or background to really perfect your shot. Now, one of the most fundamental elements to add to any outdoor shot is simply just some rocks. Obviously you want rocks that vary in size from something the size of a football, acting as like a massive cliff or rock face, or something a lot smaller. I recommend combining and collecting rocks of different colors and textures to diversify your scenes. Uh, for example, I really needed some tiny rocks to detail the foreground of a shot I was working on a while back, and I ended up breaking off these tiny bits off a much larger rock as I really liked the color. Moving along when shooting small scale things, I encourage everyone to use their imagination when it comes to this sort of thing. For instance, I often use small branches of varying sizes and set them up to act as trees for certain scenes. It's hard to balance these at times, but I've learned to get creative with my methods and I find myself using a combination of tape, glue, sticky tag, just burying them in the ground or simply leaning them up against another object. Now one of my favorite elements to add to any shot is artificial moss. It's easy to manipulate and in my opinion is something that really makes your scene feel realistic if added appropriately. There's all different types of artificial moss so I recommend buying a variety of sorts. You can typically find this sort of thing at your local craft store and there's also tons of online retailers as well. As far as perfecting your scene goes, I have three main tools that I use to achieve the precise level of detail I want. First up we have this strainer or sifter, which I use to lightly layer baking soda and as snow for some shots, but I'd imagine it would also work well for thin dirt or sand. Next up we have this small brush, which I use to do pretty much anything my fingers are too big to do. It's great for brushing off dirt or adding light touches here and there, so I highly recommend it if you're a perfectionist. Finally, we have a credit card of sorts, which I primarily just use to clean up the baking soda for my snowy shots. Finally, we have these three things right here, which can be used to complete your scene and really bring it to life. Over here, we have this atmosphere aerosol spray that's really popular among a lot of Lego and toy photographers to get a smoky or foggy look that really fills your scene. Personally, I don't use this too much and would probably consider this to be one of the lesser important tools as it can get quite expensive. And if I ever need to achieve a similar look, I just end up adding it in Photoshop. If you're ever working with some type of water shot, I highly recommend having a spray bottle on hand. Even if you're not doing high speed shots to achieve a rain effect, it's super useful for wetting your surface, adding water drops to your figure, or achieving a ripple effect in a pool of water. And lastly, as I touched on earlier, we have baking soda, which I use for my snowy shots. I have an entire video on this, so be sure to check that out if you're interested in creating a snowy scene. And that's it. Uh, those are some of the most useful tools when it comes to Lego or toy photography in my opinion, and I highly recommend them to anyone that's just getting started out. Uh, but remember that all it takes really is just a camera and a single figure. Thanks so much for watching guys. Let me know down in the comments if there's any tools or materials that you use that I left out, and I'll see you in the next video.